I brought you by did you key this week at silicon labs lady ada what is the new product introduction this week i'm glad you asked yes this week is from silicon labs which i call sci labs even though i know that's not technically their name but i'll try to remember to say silicon labs um so this week's uh i and mpi is on oh let me do it this or oh yeah we're gonna go okay, right. okay, okay. uh for the um silicon labs efr 32 mg24 dev board but also the chips uh this is an adorable little dev kit that's under 40 bucks and is a great way to get started with their chipset it has a debug interface as well as you can see uh stem iqt slash quick sensors a micro bus compatible gpio port that's also you know 0.1 inch spacing for easy uh connectivity um so buttons and of course the efr 32 mg24 chip which can be used to do, uh, which is a Cortex M33 that also has a radio in it that can do stuff like Zigbee and also uh, use with Matter. Um, so this is a series of chips that's used in that dev kit. So we're going to kind of talk about both uh, because if you get the dev kit, it's probably because you want to um, integrate this chip into your design. So um, as mentioned, this is a Cortex uh, M33 and they, at 78 megahertz, I think it's up to one point five megabytes of flash and up to 256k of memory i think like the smallest is maybe uh half a k of flash uh, half a mega flash and uh half uh, 128k of ram but also it's got a ton of peripherals um one thing that silicon labs is famous for is their crossbar which allows you to kind of connect any peripheral to any pin they've got um lots of timers and uh adc and um low power mode they're very good at the low power integration and of course the built-in radio which is kind of what you're here for you know you can get all sorts of cortex m33s but it's not really common to get one that has a 2.4 gigahertz radio in it and silicon labs also excellent at their radio stacks so um you know you could use this just for playing zigbee but in specific uh or you know ble it looks like they actually have support for that as well which is kind of cool um but what i think they're really pushing for the chip to be used for is not just Zigbee or maybe BLE, but specifically to be used with Matter, which is a kind of new and uh, new standard way for Internet of Things home devices to connect. Um, so you can check out here's all the MC peripherals. Uh, we won't talk about those. You, know, you can see them. And of course, the, the low power modes you can get under uh, 33 microamps in an active sleep mode. Um, up to down to 1.3 microamps uh, in a deep sleep. So that's really, really low, much lower than um, other Cortex chips that we know, or even Tensilka chips. So Matter, which uh, is a new high level application layer for wireless protocols that want to connect to stuff in the home or in the office, um, it's from the uh, connectivity okay, standards association i think is the name the csa which used to be the zigbee alliance and um zigbee you know you're probably aware that they were used for stuff like uh hue phillips hue lights um and other home automation sensors and control boards for home or office automation zigbee is a very common protocol because it's extremely low cost sorry a transport because it's extremely low cost very simple uses 2.4 gigahertz which is you know free to use band um yeah antennas are easy to get chipsets are easy to get um you can go into low power you don't have the thing with wi-fi where you have to have an access point a password you know it's usually done by rssi uh, location or um you know you're pressing a button on something so you know that you have to synchronize problem is is that everybody had their own um oh sorry one second uh, no six day back there um everybody had their own um zigbee or other low level um protocol application level on top of zigbee that would make it not work so for example your hue lights would not necessarily work with any other um, controllers or light systems that you have in your home so every time you bought something you'd have like these little um siloed platforms and integrations that wouldn't mesh together pun intended so the idea behind matter is that you would be able to interoperate with any device and controller inside the home. So you won't have to sort of start from scratch with creating custom gateways um, 
and custom applications and protocols. For each little device, we can have a temperature sensor and it'll work with everything that already exists in the Matter ecosystem. Um, and this is useful because so much stuff in IoT has different transports. So for example, uh, you might have um, you know, an AirPod that or HomePod that uses Wi-Fi, and you might have a, you know, a Facebook portal and that connects over Ethernet. You might have stuff that connects over Bluetooth or cellular or Zigbee or Z-Wave um, or even LoRa or 4 point, uh, 433 megahertz bands. All these transports usually, not only are they, of course, you can't have uh, Bluetooth connect directly to cellular without having a gateway, but also the application layers above them would be customized. So if you look at um, what was often called the, the seven layer OSI model, the transport layer four and below, you know, that's what is Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, whatever. But then everything above that layers five, six and seven would also be custom. And that's what Matter is trying to replace. So don't think of Matter as something that is inexorably tied to Zigbee. If you're creating something with this Scilabs chipset that uses 2.4 gigahertz, the goal is that it would be able to interoperate with devices that are using Z-Wave or Bluetooth or cellular or Wi-Fi because they would share that upper three layers. Um, and speaking of layers, don't forget seven layer <laughs> burrito also. Another another example of seven layers. Uh, so this is we're talking about sour cream and above here. All right. Matter. Um, so uh, and this is a nice diagram from Google. You know, and speaking of Google, this is one of the nice things about if you decide to go with Matter, is that no matter your protocol or your hardware, Google, Apple, um, sorry, Google slash Nest, Apple and Amazon have all basically agreed all their stuff is going to work with matter. And so you can have your little device work with these you know, very large companies. You don't have to worry about like, oh, are they going to change something in the protocol that will push me out? Or do I have to uh, pay them a licensing fee? Well, you might have to pay a licensing fee to matter, but you won't have to pay a fee or develop for each individual um, HomePod slash Nest Cam slash um, you know, Facebook display slash Alexa. Um, so the interoperability is what you're going to get. Of course, it adds um, your layers of, I don't say complexity, but of um, abstraction. So you do need to have a fairly good chip because there's security layers on top of this um, and the application layers, and you have to have it, of course, fit well within um, the Matter framework. You can't just kind of make up your own thing. You really want to use their own SDK. I think that's probably why the MG25 comes with so much RAM and so much flash, but it's also really nice because you have a, a lot of room to add uh, encryption, security, and um, layers of checking and interpretation so that you know, you're not going to have um, very basic errors with buffer management, that stuff's taken care of for you. And uh, Scilabs has a lot of chips, boards, and um, software stacks and resources for people who want to use matter with their IOT devices. Honestly, if you know, you're know you starting now, you're probably in a company and you have to create um, a home device. And you know now you can't just have it be battery operated with a couple LEDs. It has to connect to the internet. It has to connect to the rest of the devices in somebody's home. Um, it has to be controllable from somebody's phone. Instead of having you know a custom Bluetooth app for your Bluetooth device, if you make it use Bluetooth, but have matter as a uh, application level compatibility, you don't have to worry about having it work with HomePods, Alexas, Nest, whatever, like, you know, iPhones, Androids. It'll just magically work. Sort of like if you want to have a website, that website, you can write the website design on a Mac, but you can view it on Windows or an Android or an iPhone. Um, it is a standard. So part of that is that, um, and it seems to be based on uh, IP from TCP IP. Um, you get to choose your transport. In this case, we're talking about Zigbee, of course, but you can also use, you know, Wi-Fi or Ethernet or cellular, whatever. Um, so, you know, if you need to step up from the throughput rates, but also the power rating of Zigbee, don't worry, you can always um, change the underlying transport and keep that upper layer of matter compatibility. Part of that is, though, you will have to be certified. So you can't just 
throw something into the Matter ecosystem and put the Matter logo on it and say, okay, you know, I'm good to go. You have to play nicely with everything else because there's going to be a lot of devices all talking to each other um, on whatever transport and whatever gateway. And you want to make sure that you behave nicely. You don't overwhelm devices. You don't bash on their, um, on, uh, you know, like you don't DDoS the um, host controllers and you don't interfere with the, the addressing that you would have for other devices on the same transport. And so certification is something that you're going to have to go through. Um, that's not surprising though. You know, if you do Bluetooth or Zigbee, you have to get that certified anyways. So, you know, this is certification you're probably gonna go with. Check out, um, there's a white paper from Silicon Labs on how to certify your devices. Of course, if you start with a known SDK and hardware, it's gonna be a lot easier. And then there's also um, DigiKey and Silicon Labs. They just had a um, webinar that you can view on demand. You just register with um, you know, the, I think it's the um, on, on 24 service and you can view the webinar at any time. And of course there's app engineers at Matter ready to help you out. Um, another fun fact about the uh, MG24 series is um, this, Think Plus Matter from SparkFun, which was released, could be a really uh, another really nice uh, hardware dev board that's Feather Wing compatible, has uh, also Stemma QT port, Quick port, um, and has the EFR um, 32 chipset. Uh, also CircuitPython support. I will say that CircuitPython support doesn't have the Matter layer yet, but if you want to just get started with this chip and learn the peripherals and, and how they act and behave, um, Silicon Labs did do a uh, Circuit Python board support package um, for this chip family, which is kind of nice. And then chips are in stock, um, various sizes of flash, memory, and pinout. Uh, here's one, for example, that's in stock. It's about five bucks in quantity, and there's a thousand ready to integrate. So you don't have to worry about, you know, chip shortage. You know, you sign up for something and you don't get it for a year or two. Uh, they're in stock for immediate integration. There's also ready to go modules that have passives and antennas pre-tuned for you. They'll be more expensive, but you'll definitely get into production much faster. And of course, uh, the dev kit in question, there's over 250 in stock and under 40 bucks. And I think it's a great way to get started because it has the J-Link and USB and pinouts and everything ready to go. Uh, so you can plug and play with a lot of hardware. Um, lots of sensors are available. You know, Adafruit, we have at DigiKey stocked, you know, hundreds of different STEM IQT sensors. And so does SparkFun. They have quick sensors. You can go use a quick to Grove adapter uh, to get your um, whatever IoT sensing element you want to have done. And then you can work on the matter layer and software uh, using Silicon Labs SDK. And in stock, 257 at the time of this viewing. I'm about to. Um, and then there's a short video. We're going to play this, and then we're going to roll right into... All about Matter. What is Matter? Matter enables developers to create devices that connect to experiences and ecosystems of user's choice. But there's a really important feature in that statement. Ecosystems. As in, more than one. With multi-admin, a foundational feature in Matter, users can connect Matter devices to multiple apps and ecosystems locally, securely, and even simultaneously. Right now, choosing the right IoT device can be challenging. Users need to take extra effort to determine if a device they want will work with their ecosystem. And for those smart home users who have more than one preferred app or ecosystem, family members may have different brand preferences for their smart home, mobile, or other control touch points. Or they may want to share only specific devices with people in their household or those that visit and take care of it. To enable this today, product developers have to support each other's ecosystem protocols. Users have to manage more complicated purchase experiences or, with multiple ecosystems, navigate setup and account linking across them where adding a new one is a painstaking process. Today, sharing devices isn't always possible or it requires sharing more information and devices than users want. Multi-admin lets users connect their devices to any matter supporting ecosystem they want, whether that's a single product developer's app or multiple smart home platforms. Users can control which devices they share with which systems on an individual level and can easily add multiple devices to a new ecosystem to try out new experiences. Multi-admin truly delivers on Matter's promise of user choice and interoperability. 
It lets users choose the brands and devices they love, choose the experience and ecosystem they'll work with, and know that their smart home will be able to grow with them and the choices they make in the future. Matter, it's what connects the world. Hi, on NPR.